mommy's expensive <laughs> makeup. How many times do I have to tell you Crash not to out. touch mommy's things? Crash Our out. Twit. Yeah. <laughs>what's up guys we're gonna be checking out the odd ones out my thoughts on bluey so he made this video a long time ago i have never seen the show bluey i have seen it before like not watched it but i've seen it so let's go ahead and see what it's about i'm pretty sure he's gonna give me a great explanation all i know is that it's a kid's show uncle james can can we play space explorer shut up for a second i'm watching this Damn. A naturally charming preschool show. Shut up just like Why that. Why are you watching a show for babies? Don't okay, worry about kid. it. This show is extremely sophisticated and can be enjoyed <laughs> by both children and adults. So why don't you shut your ignorant mouth and find someone Ooh. who actually loves you to play your silly little space game? Damn, James. <laughs> you snapped. Okay. Hey, bingo. You can't say that to your sister. You have to say nice things. Treat others how you want to be treated, mate. Oh. Not listening to the life lessons. Oh, I really needed to hear that today. <laughs> this episode of The Odd Ones Out is called Uh My thoughts are on Bluey. Are you familiar with the Australian animated preschool show Bluey? Didn't if your know it was Australian. Is anything like mine? You'll have seen a bunch of clips of this blue cartoon dog all over your for you page, paired with Subway Surfer I've highlights. I've seen fight videos wow, and perk videos. Clips of a foreign preschool show. My algorithm messed up. You're supposed to cater to my <laughs> interests. Let's read some of the comments on these Bluey TikToks, shall we? No and shame, anime I'm a too. senior in high school, but I watched Bluey religiously, and this episode made had me all in my feels. I'd say I had a good childhood, but I binged Bluey because adult life is so stressful and I'm sad, and it reminds and me of a simpler time. Bluey you can say everyone. that again. I'm literally 27, and it's such a comfort show. Bluey is absolutely destroying me as a teenager who wishes he had this childhood. In my teen years and watching cool <laughs> episodes of Bluey. Watching Bluey High is such a fun time, dude. I don't know about huh. that last one. You know, to me, I'm just thinking out loud here. It seems like a lot of these comments weren't made by preschoolers. What's Definitely going not. on here? I'm now, not a if your brain type, is anything like spell. mine, you'll be thinking, why is this show about Australian dogs so popular with adults who don't even have children? In fact, why does Bluey have over 5 billion views on TikTok? It's Whoa! It's more than Paw Patrol, Peppa Pig, and Coco Melon. And why is this episode number eight in IMDb's Damn. highest rated episodes of all Damn. time? Damn, okay, Bluey. This phenomenon intrigued me. <laughs> and I was also bullied by a large number of people on my own team to watch the show. So one day I sat down, Put on the first episode and you are addicted. Just like that, you are addicted. I watched all 141 episodes. What, Hang on, James? 141? That's but there's too much. only 129 on Disney Plus. Don't worry, my fellow obsessive Bluey fan. We're gonna talk about that later. I work in cartoons and I've been to furry conventions, so Bluey <laughs> has always been on a my secret radar furry? of shows I'm aware of. And just from the clips that I saw, I adored the art style, especially the backgrounds. So much so that my very own background team has studied and taken inspiration from Bluey's backgrounds. Here you can see my backgrounds taking on a more Bluey aesthetic. Oh, I mean, okay. just look at the colors, especially their greens. I see what you oh mean. my god. Doesn't just looking at these backgrounds bring a smile to your face? While I was watching the first season, I realized, oh. Okay, I see why this show is so popular. Because it's genuinely a good show. We've already established that the show is great to look at, but the voice acting, the sound design, and the music are equally as amazing. So it's also great to listen to. You put me most, on this show? If not all other preschool Low shows key? will hire adults who can sound like toddlers, Bluey gets actual children to voice the actual child characters. Somehow, every Australian toddler in Bluey can be so expressive and emotional. It's impressive that the show got such a talented cast of child actors who don't sound annoying to hey, listen to. Hey, he's a black to. guy. Or maybe it's just their Aussie know. accents that I like. I don't know. <laughs> the characters have so much personality, and the comedic timing is something I've never seen before in a preschool show. I can't think of a single time Coco Melon has made me laugh no. this much. Never seen Coco Melon. Never will. The main <laughs> characters are Chili and Bandit, the parents, and Bluey and Bingo, the six and four year old daughters. Yes, Bluey is a girl. You gotta catch up, dude. Come on, it's 2020. Bluey's a girl? The show also does not hide the fact that it's Australian. Oh, wow. Multiple Australian locations. Didn't and know animals. that. They call flip flops thongs and they say things like, oh, nor. 
While some preschool shows focus on teaching kids numbers and letters, Bluey focuses on the relationship of the family and teaches its lessons through the make pretend games that the family plays. Loki, he's he's hyping this show up right now. I may have to give it a watch because adult life is stressful. Wouldn't it be nice to just kick back and have a comfort show that just makes you feel good? I think I spent so much of my adult life watching like depressing, you know, mature shows that, you know, they're not comfort shows. They're not shows that if you want to be in a better mood, you go put on especially bojack horseman so this could be a good palate cleanse who knows and i want to emphasize how perfect these two parents are Aww. these two are the most patient and emotionally aware parents i've seen ever <sighs> there are multiple times where the parents apologize I need to, get married. to their kids for <laughs> frankly not even doing anything wrong the dad is like the most perfect dad role model okay check uh. this out Bingo was that. sad that dad didn't get to see the leaf bug outside. She was like, Daddy, come and see. Come here, Daddy. Oh, this is how they sound? <laughs> but he was too busy <laughs> playing with Bluey. You I'm know, kidding, being I'm a kidding. present father figure in her life. And at night, she's all boo-hoo about it. And he kneels down, gets to her level, and apologizes, explaining that he didn't hear her. Now, I don't have any kids. But if I spent my weekend running around with toddlers and then right before bed, one of them said, <laughs> you didn't get to see the ladybug, I would say, that's okay. It's a dumb ladybug. I've already seen a ladybug. Good night. Exactly. In one episode, Chicken Rat, Bingo lost her favorite toy. And mom asks, well, where was the last place you had it? The two retrace Bingo's steps and through flashbacks, we see this bizarre day that Bluey and Bingo had. The very first flashback we see, Bluey and Bingo are cooking a chicken rat egg while wearing weird costumes. A chicken and rat egg. through this creative egg. backwards okay. storytelling, we piece together what a chicken rat is and how the kids ended up in this situation. It's episodes like that which really make me appreciate the care that went into this show and really sets Bluey apart from every other preschool S -tier? show. S-tier? Most preschool you shows got on to gross. a formula and talk <laughs> down to the viewer because typically their viewers are short. As a childless adult, I don't want to say, this show teaches you how to be a good parent, because I don't know how to be a good parent. But on paper, there are lessons in this show that are just as important for the parents to learn. So while watching season one, I got a feel for the world and characters. I started to piece together, this man locked okay, in. this show is depicting perfect parents. It's ah. well written and wholesome. Anyone, regardless of having kids, can enjoy the show. Let's watch the rest, shall we? What was that? Season what? two and season three is when things go from a hundred oh, to she get a real? thousand. It gets this real? This is when episodes okay. cover deep and emotional topics <laughs> that I think toddlers are too baby to understand. Let's see, there's the struggles of keeping romance in your relationship alive when you what? have two toddlers to look after. Why taking time to play with your kids can have a ripple effect that lasts into adulthood. Feeling inadequate as what? a mom. What it's like having a dad in the army. Parents disagreeing on different parenting they styles. Take, moms they take it there? Tipsy, implied. Dealing with infertility. Abandonment. Potentially a miscarriage. That one's still up in the air. And death. Actually, that one was in season one. You can't even compare wow. Bluey to other preschool okay, shows. Okay, Bluey. Like, what the f was Dora the Explorer even doing? <laughs> was she even trying to entertain the adults who are also going to be watching her show? Dora had the same formula every episode, and there was a map who sang a song that was just repeating the swiper, same three the words backpack. 14 times. He's been fast. Season facts. two, there's an episode where Chili is telling Bluey about how when she was a baby, she wasn't crawling or rolling over as fast as the other babies in her mom group, and she compared Bluey's developmental delay to the other babies and felt inadequate as a mother. Aww. And then this pink poodle comes to console her, looks directly into the camera, and says, you're doing great. I'm a he, him male with no kids, and I still get teary-eyed just thinking about that episode. You're gonna make me cry, man! Bluey is a kid's show that adults <laughs> can enjoy, too. No, that episode wasn't for the kids. It was directed at all the moms watching who are doubting their motherhood. When has Coco Melon ever done something like Never. this? Never. All the I mean, babies stop singing mid When I have a kid, rhyme, eventually I'm gonna have to watch Coco say, Melon, right? Hey, Mom, just wanted to say you're doing a great job raising me. Keep up the good work. Like, no, that'll never happen. I'm still not done talking about how impressive the writing in Bluey is, okay? So please indulge me for a bit. I'm switching into video essay mode as we do a deep anywhere. dive into the themes and symbolisms of one of my favorite Bluey episodes, Flatback. Flatback? Oh, okay, Flatback. I was like, wait, Flatback? <laughs> the entire episode is an allegory of human history <laughs> told from a religious and scientific perspective, respectively. 
and it touches wow. on the ever-growing relationships between a mother and child, all within seven minutes. Oh, each no, episode I'm not seven minutes. Too deep into this. Got Let's you. begin. Okay, now I see what he means by this is a kids show that adults can enjoy because some of those topics, man, you won't even see that in shows that are rated like T, teenager, no, that's video games, um, PG thirteen. <laughs> and it hit me while I was watching this video that eventually, you know, hopefully, I will soon be watching shows like this on a regular because hopefully I'll be married and have kids and they're gonna be watching shows like this so like give me five seven years who knows there may be a little prince on the channel i'll go ahead and give y'all a little peek see how he looking um yeah just don't be weird about it bandit and shilly set out to build a new swing for their porch and okay. we get this great meta self-aware joke from bandit when he complains about the instructions saying i'm, I'm not, not taking, taking advice, advice from, from a cartoon, cartoon dog, dog. Meanwhile, Ooh, the girls that's play very games meta. with the leftover packing materials that are thrown into the yard by their parents. Bluey and Bingo are given bubble wrap, which they pretend is water, so they pretend they're fish. Then they're given cardboard, which they Man. pretend is land, so they pretend they're Simpler frogs. Times. Then they're given tails and become lizards, then T-Rexes, then birds, then furry little animals. Simpler is this times, man. to look familiar. Then they're monkeys and then bipedal cave dogs. What? Is that you, Mr. Darwin? Were these girls playing out the evolution of man through a silly game? <laughs> now, if you didn't like the evolution symbolism, uh, I know you're going to love the parents being an allegory for the creators. Ooh. You know, the, the, the big guy Adam upstairs. The, the whatever you believe is going on. The parents supply the girls with their entire world. They give the girls the sea, the land, the volcanoes, and the trees. In these cave paintings the girls make that tell their history, they depict the parents as gods, higher up and in the clouds. Okay, maybe they he's not reaching. Angry. Perhaps they're still in the okay. Old Testament. The parents being the creators is hinted at again by Chili when she looks at the girls lovingly saying, Aww, we, we made, made them. them. The parents give the girls an oh! Allen wrench, aka tools, and one industrial revolution later, the girls evolve from cave dogs to modern dogs, building futuristic towns and spaceships. Throughout the episode, as the girls go through different stages of evolution, they, older. they also go through different <laughs> stages of their lives as a mother and child. As fish, Bluey says that she's the mommy fish and Bingo is the baby. Then as okay. frogs, Bingo pretends to be a toddler and Bluey teaches her how to catch flies. Then as T-Rexes, Bingo becomes a big girl. Then as cave dogs, she's a teenager. And finally, in the last stage, she's all grown up, ready to traverse the universe on her own. Aww. She thanks Bluey for looking after her and leaves on her spaceship. Bluey, now much older as shown by her having to use a cane, crosses the styrofoam threshold, which represents her death, and she gets to live with her creators. Yo, Although he's not reaching. Orchestral masterpiece is playing, and suddenly you realize you're crying? When did Low that key, start? Like, and then Bandit ties the allegory all together at the very end accurate. saying, <laughs> Ah, this is heaven. Are you joshing me right now? Yo, he this ain't joshing! This preschool show was able to tell a clever <laughs> allegorical story with tasteful religious undertones in how many minutes? Seven Did minutes. Did you just make me feel emotions over a cartoon dog? This isn't the only episode you can make an in-depth video essay on. There are plenty of other episodes that hit just as hard as this one. While I was I doing the show research was like this. for this video, this is crazy. it got me thinking about another foreign animated kid show with oh, eight Peppa minute long Pig. episodes that focus on a family of two toddlers. Peppa Except Pig. unlike Bluey, <laughs> this show is universally hated. <laughs> Caillou! 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 I had this idea in my head that people only hated Caillou because he was a more accurate portrayal of a toddler. Yo, me and all my niggas hate Caillou. There is no way you can ever 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 put caillou above the d tier bro it was trash first of all he was bald like ain't nothing wrong with being bald but i just found it a little bit weird he complained a lot oh my gosh he was such he was such a punk he was such a he was such a, a, a bitch made boy bro like i'm not even capping if you have seen caillou you know that kid is annoying af and i'm pretty sure it was canadian if i'm not mistaken man screw caillou but in the handful of caillou episodes i watched i was reminded Oh no, that's why people hate Caillou. Yeah. Because he sucks. He His sucks, readiness man. <laughs> isn't even important to the plot. It comes out of nowhere. Such Caillou a brat. Caillou getting ready in the morning. He spills cat food and says, Gilbert, look, look what, what you, you did. did. He's at the beach and this bird who's done what a nothing palm wrong that bald gets head told of to, go away. And there's a bunch <laughs> more examples of Caillou being a whiny piece of shit. 
And I can't help but think that Caillou's screeching, piercing, whiny voice does not help him be a likable character. I bet real toddlers can be little punk sometimes, but why would you show that in your cartoon and not have him learn any lesson? There's never a lesson learned in Caillou. Since Caillou was a brat all the time, a lot of people, myself included, wondered why Caillou's parents never disciplined or even tried (laughs) to change his bratty behavior. They're but tired of I it, man. About it, I realized yeah, it would be a very weird episode of Caillou if one day Caillou's mom was like, Caillou, what did you do to your sister? I made her look pretty, mommy. Caillou, that was mommy's expensive <laughs> makeup. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you Crash not to out. touch mommy's things? Crash I'm out. Twit. Yeah. Ah, my oh. My oh. 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 We need that Caillou episode. Look how he's smiling. That kid got what was coming to him. I don't know. Maybe that episode would be cathartic to some parents. Anyways, getting back to the actual best children's show ever. Even though Bluey is literally the most mentally intelligent and educational show for the minds of children, teens, adults, and parents. I may have to watch this now. Some unnamed mouse company decided to censor some of the episodes on their platform. It's the strangest things that got censored too. This horse pooping, bandit getting hit in the groin, bandit saying the word groin. groin. This hitchhiker is no longer from Argentina. That one's kind of weird. This pretend cat saying a little pretend pee on the curtains. Bandit hinting at wanting to get snip snip down there. Oh, Don't you know what I'm talking about? And yeah, the last 10 episodes know. of season three, which are some of the deepest episodes in the series, aren't even on Disney+. Plus. But that could just be a licensing thing. I don't know. I kept waiting for the infertility episode. I heard so much about it. I finally got to the last episode on Disney Plus and thought, oh, okay. They're saving the deepest one for last. The, the, the se- right, season finale. And the episode was about the family playing courtroom to determine if Bandit farted. I hope <laughs> this video convinced you to give Bluey a chance. I'm going to give I mean, it a chance still now. You're listening to a grown man talk about it. So okay. you got to be at least a little interested in it. Through its relatable and realistic portrayal of family life, the show has not only entertained, but also taught valuable life lessons to its viewers. The show's emphasis on play and family bonding is so refreshing to see compared to the usual fast-paced, mind-numbing shows aimed at kids. Bluey reminds us all the importance of spending time with loved ones and finding joy in the everyday. Aww. And if you still don't want to watch Bluey, have you thought about getting high and watching it? (laughs) This man, James, low-key just put me onto this show, bro, because I've heard about Bluey. Like, I've seen it, heard about it, just never watched it. And I know it was rated, like, super high. Didn't know it had a a number eight on IMDb, like an episode got number eight. That is insane. We have, like, shows like Game of Thrones. Uh, What else would get, like, a high ranking? Um, Stranger Things? I don't know. I don't know. But y'all get the point. Bluey is up there. But don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video, all of that great stuff, because that was it. My name is Prince of Hawkham. Stay charming, my friends.